Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We bless God for the prayer on tonight. Thank you, God. No matter how short it may be, the fact that we come together and unify in prayer. Amen. Knowing that God can and will move where two or three are gathered. We know that he has surely been and will always be in the midst. Hallelujah. I will send the, the link over. And we're going to prepare to get started. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. You want to be in your presence, God. There's nothing like being in your presence, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just shared the link. Hallelujah. So if you want to share the link, it's already loaded and you're trying to move forward. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to just be in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Thank I would very much appreciate it. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord in the house on tonight. Amen. We are continuing with spiritual warfare. This is part seven. We want to be talking about that spirit of affliction tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We bless the Lord. Yes, God. And just the opportunity to be in his presence. Thank God he has not casted us away. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord God. Amen. 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 In the 702, we've already had prayer. We are going to move forward in word empowerment on tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I pray that you all were able to invite someone to, to come on with us or at least copy the link. I'm always saying if you've been blessed by what we've been talking about, Please invite someone to join us. Amen. Amen. And if you haven't been blessed, we pray that we can get better at what we do in ministry so that we will be glad to invite someone. Amen. Amen. What does it say in the word? Um, I won't be ashamed of the gospel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And and we, we can't be ashamed of the word, but we should not be ashamed of where we're getting the word from either. Amen. 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 So we bless God for those that are on with us for our word empowerment Bible study. Those that may be watching us by way of Facebook or YouTube tonight in about an hour as it will pick up on YouTube with you, our YouTube channel as well. We don't take for granted. I know this is our regular word empowerment Bible study night. But we don't take for granted for those that are joining us, amen, by way of Facebook and YouTube. I don't take for granted you all being here because since COVID has started, so many choose to be online versus being in the house. Y'all say amen. Amen. But we are live for now on Zoom, amen. I'm looking forward to the day that we can get back in the house for word empowerment. Yes, I am. There's nothing like being together. You know, it's great that we are together like this, but there's nothing like being physically together. And we will still be doing the Zoom for those that we have that are not in the, excuse me, local area. 
anyway, the last two or three weeks we've been, we were talking about that spirit of rejection. Amen. And I pray that you all have had time to look over your notes, pray about some things, ask Holy Spirit to show you where you were in some of that. Amen. When we were doing the uh, fresh oil today, <laughs> it was so amazing. I told uh, PIT Vicky, I said, ouch. I used to be one of those we were talking about. Um, now, I never gossiped, mind you, but we were talking about that spirit of uh, <clears throat> that tongue called, uh, what was it? Uh, meddling. Uh, meddling. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So even when we talk about rejection, uh, we know that all of us have felt rejection one way or another. Is that to say that we have been rejected? Not always, but we have all felt rejection. Okay. So tonight we are going to go into this, uh, the spirit of affliction. And I know I gave you some, everyone a choice whether it will be affliction or can't remember what the other one, but this one won out. But then after I kept hearing Holy Spirit, he said this needed to come behind rejection. Because when people feel rejected, then they feel afflicted. And I promise you, as we go into this tonight, you will understand why I said that. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that uh, we're growing as we are going through these uh, different types of, uh, as we're going through spiritual warfare so that we can always be able to get what we need. Amen. Amen. I don't ever want to sit anywhere for an hour, hour and a half. I don't want to sit in the place for five minutes and I don't get something. <laughs> can Amen. I just say it like that? Amen. I don't want to waste my time. I did say it or my energy. <laughs> so uh, tonight we want to talk about this uh, affliction. In the name of Before I even go into her book, I, I looked up, um, and we um, for those who may just have joined us, because I know sometimes they wonder, do they pray before their word empowerment? We, we've been praying for 30 minutes. So don't ever feel or think, for those that are joining us by way of Facebook or YouTube, that we don't pray. We surely pray before word empowerment Bible study. Amen. Amen. Um, so when it comes to affliction, it's something that causes pain or suffering. Okay, it's an a, a grip, it's a, a crippling affliction of the nervous system, a disorder, a disease. It's a complaint, it's an ailment, it's an illness, it's a indisposition, it is a plague, it's a troubled menace. <laughs> Y'all catch that? It's a troubled menace. Anybody ever seen that show, um, Dennis the Menace? And he was such a menace to Mr. Willis. And it wasn't that he was a menace, it was the fact that Mr. Willis couldn't stand to be rubbed so. So every time Dennis came by him, he literally felt like he was being afflicted in some way or another. That came across my mind today when I was pulling my notes together. And the Spirit of the Lord says so often when people have felt like they've been rejected, they feel like this affliction comes upon them and it seems like everything that happens to them after that for a while seems to be a menace to them. It seems to cause them pain. It seems to cause them some kind of affliction, if I may. Okay, uh, uh, affliction can be a, an evil visitation. It can be pain or suffering. An affliction can be distress, pain, trouble, misery. Misery. But misery loves company. Y'all hold on to that to the end of this, end of this word empowerment. Uh, a wretched hardship or some type of misfortune, adversity, some type of torment of tribulation. And then it could be a thorn in our flesh. And there are a lot of different definitions. I just pulled some of those words. <clears throat> Amen. Um, Dr. Trim says in her book, uh, says in her book, The Rules of Engagement, Binding the Strong Man, for those who may be watching us or joining us for the first time, uh, we haven't been in this book a lot just to pull nuggets. Uh, she says, uh, it, afflictions are the look, pathological, pathological conditions of the body, soul, or the spirit. So it doesn't just happen physically. Okay. This word comes from the Hebrew word ra, 
which literally translated to mean to break into pieces or to devour it. You can imagine how the enemy is constantly trying to devour us, trying to break us down. Can you imagine how often he is trying his best to afflict us so that we cannot even move? Okay? It says it connotes um, a spirit that is assigned to cause distress, and we talked about call that out earlier, disease, and ultimately destroy. This spirit of affliction works with all major uh, um, mal mal I can have been maladies and calamities. When we look at Psalm 34 and 19, it says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions. Y'all better catch that. Many are the afflictions. Some folks feel like if you get afflicted more than one time, that's enough. But the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Y'all hear that? But the Lord will deliver him out of them all, which means it doesn't matter how many times you go through afflictions, how many times you go through torment, how many times you go through rejection, how many times you go through this, this, or this. The Lord is saying you. there may be many times in the sense that you go through these things, but I will deliver you out of them all. The problem is when it comes to the saints, not the ain'ts, People don't want to go through. And when they go through these things, they're like, wait a minute. Why are you doing this to me? Why is this person doing attacking me this way? But the Lord says many are the afflictions of the righteous, which means that tells me in my mindset, we, have, we are strong enough. We are made to last. We were built to handle anything that comes our way by way of affliction, whether it's physical, emotional, mental. We are supposed to be able to handle these things knowing that God will bring us out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it like this, in due season when he feels like it. Mm -hmm. well, if he's not bringing us out, could it be that there's still something we need to learn from what we're going through? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it also says, um, okay, then it gives a list of all of those. We're not going to go through the list right now because we're going to pick them up. But there are different types of affliction, different categories of affliction before I go through my notes. There are physical afflictions, okay, that attacks the nervous system, respiratory, muscle, muscular, digestive, skeletal, reproductive, um, endocrine, which is kidneys. There are physical afflictions, okay, circulatory, uh, urinary, but then there are also mental and psychological affli afflictions, okay, and we talked about those when it came to oppression and depression and oppression and possession, guilt tripping, insomnia, okay, bad thoughts, unclean, unclean thinking, but then there's also financial afflictions, okay, financial afflictions where people suffer lack, they, they go through debt, they go through poverty, uh, a, an addiction called gambling, all of those can be afflictions, I'm going to wrap them all together tonight, then there's also an area of affliction that could be the, uh, domestic, uh, familial, afflictions where divorces occur, family secrets occur, there's abuse in relationships, there's incest in, in, in relationships, there's competition in relationships, and there's arguments. <laughs> Those can come under that, skill, that setting of domestic afflictions. Then it goes on to say there are emotional afflictions. We talked about some of that too, where there's loneliness, depression, suppression, repression, Rejection, we talked about that the last three weeks. Emotional afflictions, uh, disillusionment. Y'all know those people who think crazy in their mind. Discouragement, emotional instability, unforgiveness, bitterness. All those come under the category of emotional affliction. Then we have a, a category called social affliction. Prejudice, harassment, rejection, alienation, isolation. A lot of times when people are going through social afflictions, I'm trying, I don't want to get ahead of myself. A lot of times when people go through those social afflictions, they think everybody is against them. If, if you're not black, you afflicted me. If you're not white, you afflicted me. If you're not saved, you afflicted me. If you're not, y'all get what I'm saying. That social status. If, if you're not in my group of people, then I have an affliction because you're doing something to me. We got to get delivered. Nobody owes us anything. And I'm getting to a place I'm getting tired of hearing that one. But then there's biological afflictions where there is um, gastrointestinal afflictions, where there's hormonal inflictions, neurological, okay, respiratory, immunological, um, 
all of the cardiovascular afflictions. These are all biological. It don't stop there. Then there's also a group or, or a category of afflictions called physio physiological. Okay, demon spirits will attempt to create physiological afflictions which lead to malfunctioning of our normal process of our bodies. Okay. That's when you have body aches, pains. I said, Lord Jesus, am I being hit by the enemy? <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because lately my bag been kicking. But it's how you handle it in your mind. How you process that thing will determine whether or not you can get delivered from that. So that physiological swelling, bleeding, gross, infection, itching, movement disorder, sickness, disease, fatigue. Now, just because you go through some of these things does not always mean that you are afflicted by the enemy. Some of it goes along with age. <laughs> Y'all hear me good. And then there's two more, emotional affliction. Well, we talked about fear and guilt and shame and anger, worration, uh, unforgiveness, revenge, mm -hmm, bitterness. All of those fall in the category of emotional afflictions. And then there's one that I didn't even know of until I looked in the book and I read this book so many times, nutritional afflictions. When there's high fat, high sodium, yo-yo diet and feasting, fasting syndrome. Y'all understand that, that nutritional affliction, some of that was what we bring on ourselves, okay? So that was, I think it was nine categories of affliction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 categories of affliction. Will we get to all those tonight? No. Will we tie some of it in together? Yes. Anybody want to comment before I move and talk about the seven signs of spirit of affliction because i'm going to be talking about feeling wounded too put all of that together tonight no comments okay so i when i pulled up my notes from a couple of years ago i'm sure things have changed a little bit i have a session that talks about the seven signs of the spirit of affliction things that can make you know that you've got this demonic spirit riding you so when praying with, uh, when, when, you, when you pray with someone that has a disease, a lot of times you got to try to find out before you really pray, what are they dealing with? You know, we ask people often, how do you want me to pray? It's not that we want to know how you want us to pray. We want to know what you feel that you're being attacked by or afflicted with so we know how to pray accordingly. So we can pray the scriptures that can break the chains of those certain things that we're being afflicted with. A lot of times, People don't understand that there's spiritual afflictions, there's wounded, being wounded. Uh, people don't understand there's physical afflictions and all of that put together, okay? The woman that had the issue of blood, she had an, uh, she had an affliction. The woman that had for, for uh, who was it, for 18 years that was bent over, she had an affliction. It was a demonic attack. And I know for a fact, God don't want us to be bent over for more than that, all that length of time, when all we got to do is hold our head up, when all we got to do is get the help that we need. But if we never admit we've been afflicted, if we never admit that um, we feel like we've been afflicted, if we never admit that we've got an issue or we felt rejected or we felt like certain things have happened to us, if we never truly admit it, then we will always be afflicted when in reality we're not, and we're afflicting ourselves. There's a section that talks about that as well. What are y'all thinking? Y'all all right? Okay. Okay, so when we look at the different types of afflictions, we have to ask ourselves, have I been afflicted? And if so, how? Not just have I, but if so, how? How do you respond to certain questions? Um, a lot of times people that feel like they're being afflicted, they feel shame or they feel guilt. They feel like they can't forgive. And I'm gonna tie this in, I promise you. But a lot of times when you feel those things it's mainly because you're being mentally tormented. I didn't say it, that's what, word, that's what the different words say, okay? When I looked up different things in the psychological situations and things like that. People are being mentally tormented and they hear these voices in their minds, okay? Anytime you hear voices, you are being afflicted and it's mentally, it's psychological and you've got to decide and determine 
how are you going to best get free from that? Okay. If 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 we don't know how to, uh, if we don't know how to get the right coping mechanisms me mechanisms, then guess what? We will always feel like we're being afflicted. Have y'all ever noticed people learn how to cope? Come on, we all got some coping mechanism. We all got something that helps us to make it from day to day. Y'all get what I'm saying? If I feel like I'm being pushed, there's certain things that I can do to help me cope to, to pretty much make you don't even exist in my world for that moment. And sometimes it's okay to have coping mechanisms, but then there's sometimes that you gotta just stand up and say, wait a minute, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. And if I don't deal with it, then guess what? It's going to cause me more harm. We talked earlier about this, this spirit of affliction will cause you to be destroyed broken into pieces so we've got to make sure we get to a place to understand we can't just use coping mechanisms to to cope we got to be able to say wait a minute let me deal with it so how many have have used those coping mechanisms for so long to you've gotten to a place now or you've got to a place in the past that you realize you never dealt with something because you've just been coping the whole time y'all all right Okay, I just feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay. So a lot of times whenever we, we find ourselves dealing with a spirit of affliction, we have to figure out how are we being afflicted? Are we being afflicted because we feel wounded? And I myself never really thought about it until I looked over my notes again. And I realized that there's a spiritual wounding and affliction that go hand in hand. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. So I started reading over my notes and, and I was surprised because a lot of times people say they are wounded, but have they, are they really wounded or are they really dealing with an affliction? Are they really rejected or are they dealing with a, a wound? Because sometimes if you don't deal with a wound, if you don't take care of that wound, if you won't uh, put proper things on that wound, then it becomes an affliction because it doesn't go away and it constantly eats at you and eats at you and get bigger and bigger. What are you thinking in my tick? Yeah, our, our circumstances can be wounded sometimes uh, and if we don't deal with them, if we don't communicate as we talked about last week, we have to communicate and figure out ways to, to, de to deal with it. You know, to, to come up with a solution to to resolve the issue that you're having. Okay. Okay. Come up with a solution. That's a good one. So look, every believer, y'all hear me good. Every believer must be positioned to confront the spirit of affliction. We got to be willing to confront. So a lot of times people won't confront, they run. But if you're not willing to confront something that you feel is afflicting you, mm. if you're not willing to confront something that you feel is causing you harm and wounding you, then you'll never get delivered from this thing. Y'all hear what I just said? Confrontation is not always a bad thing. Mm. I better hear that again. Confrontation is not always a bad thing. See, I deal with stuff. I say exactly what's on my mind. I ask the Lord to word my mouth, even though some folks might not think I do. I ask the Lord to word my mouth, but then I have to say what's on my heart. Because if I don't, then I walk away with this thing nagging, nagging, nagging all the time because I really wanted to say something, but yet I didn't. So we can cause our own personal affliction, personal wounds when we think someone else is doing it to us. Okay? So I'm going to read my notes, but say something if you want me to look up. Every believer must be positioned to confront the spirit of affliction, demanding that they leave in the name of Jesus, you got to tell those demons they got to get away from you. You got to command that they flee. If you never command that those demonic spirits leave, then guess what? They're going to keep right on. Mm -hmm. Y'all take your things off because I can't hear you. And if I can't hear you, the folks that, that's listening to the recording can't hear you saying amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you. <laughs> so look, some sicknesses will never be uh, adequately dismantled unless we deal with the reality of what caused the origin in the beginning. Okay, so we're quick to say, I'm being afflicted by this and I'm being afflicted by that, but what's the core of it? What's the baseline of it? Okay, so we have to be careful 
not to run away from it, but deal with it. You know, now I said today on Facebook, I mean, on Fresh Oil, I said, well, maybe I have been meddling sometimes in somebody's life. But y'all catch, catch what I mean by that. Because I had said, you know, sometimes I don't meddle, but, but, but when you care enough about someone, you want to help figure out the, the problem. You want to help mm -hmm. figure out how to help them. You want to try to help, help, help them figure out how they can get delivered. Amen? So, Amen. so I, I had to understand something. The, the Lord said in his word that he delivered the poor in his affliction and opened their ears in oppression. God wants to deliver us. I don't ask me where I got it from because I can't exactly remember. He wants to deliver us, but we have to first say, this is where I am. Okay? The spirit of affliction is, is a... Um, Okay, I'm going to go there. Look, this spirit of affliction comes to, comes to paralyze God's people and keep us from our destiny. Because don't you know, if you feel like you've been afflicted, whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally, physiologically, any kind of affliction makes you do what? Either stop in your tracks or run back or step back, right or wrong. Right, if you, right. If you're hurting. You don't, uh, you don't move as fast. You know, wow. lately my back been hurting and I ain't, I don't move as fast. Good to see you, Miss Helen. So y'all understand what I said. So, so we, so we got to, um, that's right. We got to name the problem. So we have to get to a place, first of all, to, to, to know how to realize that if you're afflicted by anything, it will stop you in your track. It will keep you from moving. Okay. Whether it's a headache, whether it's a lie whether it's a judgmental spirit, whether it's rejection, no matter what, it would keep you from moving forward if you don't deal with it. Amen. Okay? Amen. Um, so when I look at this, uh, it becomes a long time battle for most of the Christians. You yeah. know, a lot of times, I'm, I'm going to say, a lot of times folks in the world, they don't, they don't, um, sometimes I look at some folks, it's like they don't let stuff just linger. You know, they like... If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. But why is it that the saints constantly allow that lingering thing of affliction to cause us to stop in our tracks when we are supposed to be the strong-minded ones? Y'all hear what I just said? We're supposed to be the strong-minded ones. So it becomes a battle in the mind of God's people. And, and this thing causes people to keep fighting constantly against the problem over and over and over again but they never really deal with the affliction. They never really deal with the problem. And after a while, it's not, it's not that that thing is subsiding or going away. Guess what? It's still right there. Wait to one little thing to pull a Band-Aid off and you afflict it all over again because you never really put enough pain reliever or anything else to deal with. Does that make sense? It does. And, you know, I look at, I don't know who I talked to recently. Somebody said, well, I'm just tired of praying. I said, what do you mean you're tired of praying? They said, I'm tired of praying. It don't seem like anything is changing. It doesn't seem like nothing is, is being resolved. I go through this. It's been over a year, and I'm still going through the same thing. The negative is the negative, and, and it seems like I can't make it. So I, I looked at the person, and I remember saying, I said, you know what? Let me ask you a question. Have you identified the affliction first? Have you identified where it started at? Have you found the root of it? Because if you never find the root of that affliction, you'll never get healed from it. Somebody tell me, briefly tell me what I just said. Go ahead, MIT. You got you got to be honest about it. You, 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 you got to be honest about really what's your... I'm going to use the word hang up. You really got to be honest about what your issue is. I mean, you know you got an issue. And, and, I'm, and, and you know you got an issue. You got to be honest about your issue. And you got to be honest about how you communicate about your issue. You, you can't, keep, like you said, keep putting a bandage on it. If you got a, 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 you don't communicate about things, you let things build up. Uh, if you feel as though 
you're not being treated fairly, I'm just going to use, say, a job. If you don't feel like you're being treated fairly on a job, you mumble and you grumble and you complain about it all the time. You mumble and you grumble and you complain about it all the time. But you don't sit down and talk with your manager about it. You don't try to come to, to get some clarity to let somebody know where, where you are about it. And that's what I mean. You got to be honest about it. Hey, I'm frustrated in this area because I feel like, you know, okay. that's why I said be honest about it. I don't okay, when you just said frustrated in this area, I can take that to go to where I was going to. Where is where is the root of the frustration? Mm-hmm. Y'all get what I'm what I'm saying? Where is the root of your fiction? Where is the root of your pain? Is it because you're not you feel like you're not being treated fairly? Is it because you didn't get the position? Where is the root of your frustration? Where is the root of that pain? Where is it coming from? Is it an inner thing, or is it something that's really at the forefront? No matter what, whenever we feel afflicted by something, there's a root of it. Why does this thing affect me so? And a lot of times, it's not what people think it is. It might not even be the manager. It could be a fact that someone is, has this insecure issues. It, it could be a fact that somebody's self-esteem is just too low. Mm-hmm. So where's the root that causes people to feel as though they're being afflicted or abused or wounded in some way or another? Okay. And I believe in my heart, God wants us to get to a place that we can start looking at the root of our affliction. Where did the pain start? Where, how, how, why did it cut, get so deep? Okay, find out the root of it. So look, the spirit of affliction constitutes hardship. That's already, I already talked about that troubles and struggles and poverty. The moment we determine to be, the moment we determine to figure out where the root is, then and only then can we get the, that, that we can determine how to help get it fixed or allow God. Because see, some things God's not going to do. It's literally something he's not going to do. He wants us to do our part. But if you feel like you've been afflicted and you never get to the root of it, God is probably standing back saying, wait a minute, I'm not touching it. Because I've been trying to show them this, this, or this. This is the area. This is why this happened. This is why this has happened. But a lot of times people don't understand this. Everything is not a satanic attack. Y'all hear me? Everything is not a satanic attack. Everything God is not doing. Some of it we bring on ourselves because we get afflicted by something or we feel wounded by something and we just feel like it's just crowding us and taking us under. Okay, listen to this right here. The more you, um, the more we get to a place that we want to know God, even the more, the more trouble will come. I'm going something with this, I promise you. The greater the glory, the greater the attacks will come. When, when we get close to our breakthrough, it intensifies the inflictions and the wounds. Why is that? Somebody tell me why you think that's so. The closer you get to your breakthrough, it intensifies the affliction or, our, or it makes our wounds hurt worse. Uh, P.I.T. Nanette. I think um, a lot of times the enemy cannot prevent the blessings of the Lord from coming our way. What, what God has for us is for us. So his strategies are to get us to move ourselves out of position so that when God is ready to reveal the blessing or manifest the blessing, we no longer qualify in what God was calling us to do. So he just, his, there are two, there are two weapons that the enemy is using that we're seeing so frequently now in the world. One is distraction. And the second is deception. So Mm -hmm. if he can distract us um, by stirring up something over here and get us to turn and shift our focus and our gaze off of the Lord, I, I, I think so clearly of Peter getting out of the boat. And as long as he was focused on the Lord, he was able to walk on the water. But the minute he took his eyes off of the off the Lord and began focusing on the waves, the wind, and things like that. Then, then seeing in the natural, he began to respond in the natural, and he began to sink and cry out. That faith, that that courage, that boldness was gone. But but it didn't start that way. And I think it is the same way with us that the enemy comes against us 
to distract us so that we will no longer look on the Lord. We'll no longer walk in faith. We'll no longer uh, rehearse the word. We'll no longer remain in prayer so that, so that we shift. And in that shifting, it causes a delay of what, whether it's God's deliverance, whether, whatever it is that the Lord had, it causes a delay from us actually receiving uh, what we were so close to. And that's, and I think that's a really strong trick that he uses, you know, and I think that's why the word tells us not to faint, but to keep doing, keep pressing, keep moving forward and don't allow these things to hinder us and trip us up. Amen. 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 So, so Amen. we've got to, we got to see where we are. Okay. If Peter really looked within himself, he would have realized that there was something inside of him that was lacking. Okay, that 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 he should have kept his eyes on Jesus. However, but because he didn't realize there was a lack somewhere. So when it comes to affliction, you got to realize where you are. Where's the lack that you? What what's inside of you that's causing you not to be able to handle the afflictions? Look, when a person is attacked spiritually, instead of him <clears throat> coveting his time in prayer. A lot of times they and, and in, instead of people spending time in prayer, they find themselves uh, going all outward trying to find something to soothe the problem. When God is saying you got to look inward when it comes to afflictions, okay, you got to get to the root of it. Going from this one to this one to this one to this one and place to place to place is not going to solve your afflictions. It may put a band aid band aid on it for a minute. But if you don't go to the deep, the, the depth and the core of what caused the affliction from the beginning, no matter where you go, and I'm going to say this, I'm always saying this, we take us with us. Okay, so if you're afflicted over here, you're going to be afflicted over there. Or let, ooh, let me rephrase, I hear you, Holy Spirit. If you feel afflicted over here, you're going to feel afflicted over there. If you feel wounded over here, you're going to feel wounded over there. Because you, have, you haven't gone deep within yourself to see what the cause of that affliction or that wound is. Okay? And so when the enemy wants to attack, like I said, he will introduce that spiritual spirit of affliction so that we can all feel as though we're under some type of satanic attack. But the problem is it only comes to, to shackle us and bind us up. The satanic plan behind the spirit of affliction is always there to rob us of our opportunities, rob us of joy, rob us of peace. And I promise you, I'm going somewhere with all of this. Rob us of everything that God has for us, where Evelyn Lynette was talking about. Oh, y'all moved on me. Okay. Um, most demonic spirits will not rest. They're not going to rest until they have you bound to where they want you to be. Wow. Okay. So we're going to get into the phys physiological afflictions as well in a second. So God is saying tonight, where are you in this? Have you looked at your afflictions and wondered why is this happening? Okay, when we look at Job, people always say, oh, Job was really, really afflicted physically. But he, he wasn't just afflicted physically. He was afflicted what, mentally, emotionally. He was afflicted spiritually. Because for a moment he had to, he said, I cussed the day I, I, I was born. Y'all hear what I just said? So he was, he was afflicted in all those areas, but then Job had to look within himself and say, wait a minute, it doesn't matter how bad I'm hurting. It doesn't matter how, how, how bad they're talking about me or telling me to do this or this. I still have to trust God, okay? All of the swords, he still had to trust God. Well, what we have to understand is that we got to get to a place to be like, remember when Jesus said, Ah, uh, Lord, where's that scripture? Um, he asked the man at the pool of Bethesda, um, "Do you want to be do you want to be well in a sense?" Okay, he said, "I don't have nobody to put me in the water." Hear what I'm about to say. God said, "When this demonic spirit of affliction come upon us, you can't wait for someone to get you to your deliverance. You got to decide. You know what? I don't care who went before me to get theirs." If I got to tread lightly, if I got to do what I got to do, I'm going to keep moving so I can get delivered from this affliction, from this thing that keeps messing with me. But then Jesus also told, told what did he tell the other man? Uh, take up your bed and walk. Okay? The one that they lowered through the roof, 
Okay, the even the one at the pool. A lot of times he's saying we got to take up our bed and walk. We got to get up and do something. You will never get delivered from any type of demonic afflictions if you don't do something. Everybody want to be carried. Everybody want to be uh, nurtured. Everybody want to be caressed. I ain't got time to caress. You got to take up your bed and walk. You got to say this bed of affliction that has been carrying me, that I've been laying on for so long, I got to get up. Why would I stay here in this bed of affliction when I can get up and get my strength back? You'll never mm -hmm. get your strength back as long as you land in your pity. As long Amen. as you land in your affliction, you'll never get your strength back. Haven't, don't y'all know when, when you are sick, mm -hmm. you can lay in that bed for a week or two and it saps your energy. But after a while, if you ever get up, you get re-energized, you get rebuilt up. Well, then that spirit of affliction is only there to keep you bound. So that you won't get spiritually strengthened. Okay. And I think one of those came from John 5, 1 through 15. Okay. When Jesus saw um, this man that had been uh, in his condition for a long time, I knew I had somewhere. And he said, will you be made well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I, I am coming, another steps before me because another steps before me. And then Jesus said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and he walked. Y'all hear what I just said? So you got to take up your bed of affliction and walk. Don't keep laying there. Don't keep worrying if you're going to get made whole. It's up to you. Okay? Many of us go through different levels of afflictions since y'all going to let me talk. <laughs> So many of us, so many people go through so many different levels of afflictions and they have simply tried almost everything that is to get delivered, okay? And it seems as though the more they pray, the more they get afflicted. The more they fast, the more they get afflicted. However, the Lord is saying, you got to take up your bed. You got to pick it up. You got to say, I'm not going to lay there anymore. So all of those afflictions, those different, those different uh sections of afflictions that I called out, all of those afflictions can have you laying down. But mm -hmm. it's time to stop laying down, but it's time now to rise up. Okay? Um, most people that find it difficult to, how do I want to put this? A lot of people who find it difficult to, uh, to reach their destiny or reach their purpose, they, some of them never really stop to think what is really the core of this? Why can't I reach that plateau? Why is it I get to that certain place and I get halted by an affliction? What is causing this? Could it be that you're dragging the bed along with you? Could it be you haven't let it go? Y'all get what I just said? Could it be you just have not let it go? It, it has become a ball and chain on your ankle because you don't want to be set free. I did say it. I, I heard Holy Spirit clearly. Some folks don't want to be set free. They like the attention. They want to be afflicted, whether it be physical, whether when they can go to the doctor and get drugs, medication, whether it be mental, whether it be uh, social. They want to feel like the outcast. So many people like the fact that this affliction will bring them some type of attention, that will bring them some type of comfort. Who wants to have comfort from affliction? Y'all hear me? I don't need no comfort from no affliction. I'm saying, day the Lord, take this pain away from me. So you might be comfortable in it, but I can't be. Okay? Listen, um, so often people, people feel like that, ooh, okay, I'm going to say it. Most times when people are going through affliction, they don't ever take time to thank God. I said it. You know, they, they don't thank God for, for the strength in the trials. They don't thank God for the, for the promises that he already made despite of the affliction. They don't thank God for, the, um, for, 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 the, for knowing that he's bearing, their, uh, bearing their, their problem, their situation. They don't thank God that he's never departed from them, even though they're going through. I got you, baby. Let me give these last three thank gods. They don't thank God for making them a living testimony, using them as a living testimony. Y'all get what I'm saying? They just want to complain about the, their affliction, but they never thank God why they're in the affliction. Go ahead, uh, Elder Vanessa. 
So I was just thinking as you were talking about that, um, you know, for Psalm 119 in 71, where it says it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. And so, you know, for those who, especially when it comes to the word in, in our belief, because you said it earlier, some people just want to waddle in self-pity. And they want to just stay there and just marinate on that thing and marinate on it. But if you're not learning from what you've gone through, yep. then it makes it not worth the thing that you've gone through. You understand what I mean? Oh, oh I know exactly what you're saying. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's like everything has to be a learning process. You have to learn from everything that we've gone through mm -hmm. and you won't learn it because some people they're like, why do I keep going through the same thing over and over and over again? Well, maybe because you didn't get it the first time. So you have to keep going through the same thing until you can get it. And, and really it comes from trust in, in God. I mean, if we don't trust his word and we don't trust that God is going to do what he said he's going to do then we're going to keep on going through those things because in order to build up your trust in God, we have to really understand that, you know, if God said it, then it's done. It's finished. Oh, oh yeah. And, and if he stepped back and allowed the afflictions, good to see you, Minister Gregory. If he steps back and allowed the afflictions, shouldn't there be purpose in it? There's a sign that says there will be glory after this or something like that. You don't get what I'm saying. No matter what you go through, somebody told me recently, you've been hit real hard, but honey, there's glory coming after this. And then I caught myself and I said, oh no, there's glory while I'm in this. Y'all catch what I just said. So many are the afflictions again of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Okay? He said many, as I said earlier at the beginning of this session, many. That doesn't mean you're going to be afflicted one time and that's going to be it. Good to see you, Miss Cole. Y'all get that. Many, which means there are many times we will be afflicted. But if you waddle in where you are or you don't gain some type of um, understanding of why you're going through the affliction, then guess what? You're going to be on that same bed of affliction day after day, month. I'm going to say it week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. I know people won't admit it, but some folks been going through this same type of affliction in their life for a whole decade, 10 years, when you really don't have to. I don't want to be afflicted with the same affliction for 10 years, nevertheless a whole year. <laughs> Y'all understand what I just said? Come on, we, we got to do, do our part. There are the different reasons I'm looking at the clock. So if somebody needs to say something, just kind of call my name. There are different reasons why people can be afflicted. And now what I'm finna call, give me a call out does not mean all of these are out of you. And it does not mean these seven, there's no more. I'm just saying these are some reasons why people are being afflicted. Okay? It can be a direct consequence from sin. You can find that in Galatians 6 and 8 or Proverbs 11 and 18. I'm not going there, but it can be a consequence of sin. Somebody said to me recently, oh, you've been hit real hard. You just had that spine surgery. Now you get me to go through this, this, and this. Could it be? I said, get up out my face. Because I'm, I'm not boasting, but I know I'm living right, walking right, talking right. Do y'all hear me? So it ain't no consequence of sin. I, I rebuke that one. But it can be a consequence of sin. Okay? Afflictions can be a judgment from God. <laughs> Some people don't want to hear that. Somebody told me one day, God don't put nothing bad on nobody. Oh, really? I, I, the God I know allowed wars. He allowed healings. But you can find that official can be judgment from God from in, um, in Ezra, no, in Ezekiel 36, 18 through 19, uh, chapter 39 and 20, verse 24, Romans 1, verse 18 to 32, Romans 2, verse 6, Romans 6, verse 23. I just gave you some of it. Sometimes affliction can be some type of judgment from God. Listen, somebody got mad with me when Katrina hit. I didn't bite my tongue. I heard the Lord clearly. 
He said, I stepped back and allowed some things. Same thing with the pandemic. I heard him clearly. I stepped back and allowed some things. Y'all hear what I just said? Judgment from God. So be very careful when you say, oh, there's no way any affliction is from God. I beg to differ. Read the word. Y'all say amen. Amen. Afflictions can purify us and help us help us develop endurance. Don't you know sometimes God will step back and allow afflictions to help us to get strengthened? But if you can't endure, if you can't be like a rubber band man, I'm always saying, good to see you. Uh, oh, okay, I thought that was in the page. <laughs> Listen, I what did I say months ago when we when we when, when we were first starting out in the uh, process of the assignment, when the Lord said you got to learn how to be uh re have resilience. Okay, if you can't be like the rubber band man and stretch and endure some stuff, then guess what? God said, so we got to endure as good soldiers. Sometimes he'll step back and allow the pain and the heartache because we don't know how to endure. But the officials can purify us while we uh, and develop endurance. You can Daniel 12, verse 10. I know y'all waiting on scriptures. James 1, verse 3. 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. All of those talks about how we can be developed in endurance while we're going through these afflictions. Okay, we'll break the afflictions down next week. Right now, I'm just giving you what they say, nuggets for where we're going. The, the fourth thing, afflictions can occur for God's divine purposes. Y'all better hear what I'm about to say. David had to go through afflictions for God's divine purpose. You better start saying, Lord, I thank you for the affliction because you've got purpose in this thing right here. Do y'all hear me? You better know God has God's got purpose in everything that He's that He's allowed. But if if you feel like you've been afflicted and, and people doing something to you, okay, well, you keep thinking that. My mindset is God, what purpose is this? What am I gaining from this? What no, let me read, let me rephrase it. God. What are you going to get out of this? Okay. Uh, so you can find that in Job 2, verse 7, Isaiah 53, verse 7, Psalm 119, verse 75. Okay. The next one is affliction is part of living <laughs> in a fallen world. A lot of times people don't want it. It's, it's a part of living. You're not going to go through life and never be afflicted. What makes you think you isolated? Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to whoever we can't see and those who might watch it later. What makes people think that they are isolated from pain and heartache and affliction? Come on, we live in the same world. But scriptures for that you can find in Psalm 25 and 16, 1 Peter 1 and 6, and John 16, St. John 16, verse 33. Oh, and this one right here. I know y'all going to get this one. Affliction can be the result of persecution for Jesus' sake. <laughs> we get persecuted all day long. We get afflicted for you just living right, walking right, talking right. The enemy will hit you just because you, you, you belong to God. Somebody said one day, and I laughed so hard. They were like, I could have stayed in the world. I didn't get hit this hard. And I'm like, really? Because it, it really dawned on me what they were saying. I never got hit like this when I was in the world. I may as well go back to the world. An ignorant statement, but you hear it so often. Okay? For as a result of persecution for Jesus. Okay? That's in 2 Timothy verse 3 and 11. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 11 through 12. I'm sorry. Psalm 69 verse 6 through 7. And 1 John 3, verse 13. Okay, now here comes the one y'all will probably love. Affliction can be the result of a direct attack from Satan, which we've been saying. He will attack you because he just don't like you. Okay? It's as simple as that. Luke 22, verse 31. Ephesians 6, verse 12. 1 Peter 5, verse 8. Okay, afflictions is part of living. It's, it's part of living. Now that I said all that, maybe I got a comment before I tell you how I can how I can add, I can put spiritual woundings and afflictions together. 
now that you understand affliction. You know, Vanessa, you're thinking hard, aren't you? I'm going to read this paragraph and then you can jump on in. When we look at afflictions, now that I've given you all some reasons why we get afflicted, a lot of times we get afflicted because of a spiritual wound. Okay? It's a violation of our core. It's something that harms us to such a deep level. Okay? Spiritual wounds. Ooh, I'm going to say it because Ella Vanessa, you can, you can probably contest to this. Spiritual wounds, when they come, it is such a violation of, of our spiritual walk with God. Why did I say that? Because most of the time when there's a spiritual wound, we don't realize it's a direct result of an affliction. Okay? When these type of wounds occur, especially when they're church afflictions, it causes us to be so hurt to our core that we don't realize or we don't remember those seven things that I said, the reason why we get afflicted. All of that goes out the window when you get a spiritual wound. Because a spiritual wound, you can't bandage up. A spiritual wound, you cannot cover up. A spiritual wound is not like one of those afflictions that you're going to get healed from it through surgery or something after a while. Okay? When it comes to a natural affliction, eventually something's going to happen to cause you to get some type of relief. But when there's a spiritual wound, sometimes there is no relief for a long time until you get to the core of it. Somebody talk to me right quick. Go ahead. Um, I think this is I think this is one of the areas where um, uh, I see spiritual wounding as a result in this context as a result of rejection, because when you're when 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 you have a situation. Um, with a church at church where there was rejection, I think that opens the door or causes that spiritual wound to uh, be made or a spiritual wound is made. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. And, and I agree that, that, that it can't, it, because in this context, it is such a violation it does shake you to the core. And I think that's why um, being delivered from the rejection is just as challenging as recognizing the pattern uh, of the wounding. Um, and so it causes, it causes one to reel, if you will, emotionally. So I agree wholeheartedly that what you know to do, forgive. <laughs> what you know to do, <laughs> take it to God. Uh, what you know to do goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the key areas. I Well, for me, it was a key area where I reacted versus responded. And so you sort of have to, um, I had to grab a hold of myself to sort of stop myself and my thoughts, to allow the Lord to sort of calm me down one and then two to begin to speak so I could see, first of all, what was the right thing to do. And then as I forgave the and sort of, I'm, I'm not a person to go, why God? But, um, but for this is like, tell me what's going on kind of it was more of that kind of question then he began to share and what he shared with me was how I had how I certainly felt rejected um it might not have been an actual rejection but because I felt it um there was a wounding and therefore I still had to address and now I didn't I didn't perceive a spiritual wound but I knew I was nursing one. So, um, so um, it was like, it was there, but I, I, didn't, I didn't call it by that name. I, I, I called it more of rejection than I did wounding. But, but as you're talking about it, 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 it was a, there was a definite wounding. Okay. There, there, there was a definite wounding. Good to see you, Ms. Sawyer. I got to go back to what she said. She said she was nursing 
that wound. Mm -hmm. And so often we can nurse a wound, but we can't nurse what we call afflictions. We can nurse a wound so that we can just put a little bit of something on it and it'll stop hurting for a minute. <laughs> Y'all understand that? That if you stop hurting for a minute, but what happens when you stop nursing it? Mm -hmm. Look how quicker we can get past the affliction. Look how quicker our bones can begin to heal. Look how quickly, y'all get what I'm saying? That frailty of our lives starts to be built back up if we stop nursing the wound and figure out why we felt wounded and then get delivered from it. Does that make sense? Now, guys, those of you that are on Facebook, please, you're welcome to comment. Let me know if, if it's something that you, you're dealing with right now, <clears throat> okay? Uh, listen, we, um, I thought I saw a hand. What we got to understand is so many people spend, spend their lives trying to avoid afflictions, trying to avoid being wounded. They spend so much of their life trying to avoid this spiritual thing and this physical thing that they keep running but they're never running outside of it because it goes with them, okay? And so what we have to do with that is understand the characteristics of the spiritual afflictions and understand the characteristics of the spiritual wounding so we can stop running from the pain and get healed from the pain. Somebody tell me what I just said. Come on, quickly tell me what I just said. Anybody, briefly tell me what I just said. No, none of you all has ever ran from your pain instead of dealing with it. Go ahead, MIT. I didn't have anything. Oh, okay. You, you did like this. Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to say it again. We can run from our afflictions. I got you, Elder Vanessa. We can run from our spiritual wounds, but we can never get healed from them until we deal with them. Come on, talk to me right quick, young lady. So I was just thinking about, it. it's funny because I, I kind of went through something like that right before we came on tonight. Um, you know, sometimes we, we just want to avoid um, conflict or controversy. And so when we, when we get to the point where we just don't want to deal with it. Okay, you froze up on us, love. We can't, we can't hear you. She froze. Yeah, okay, okay. So Minister Merlin, you want to comment until we can get to, she can come back? Sure. I actually was going to say something very similar to what Elder Vanessa was saying. Many of us avoid conflict. We avoid controversy. It doesn't feel good. We don't like it. And we're not always sure that we can be the, sorry. Ooh, now what if we were in church? Is that just I know. And I know, and I apologize. I don't even know how to turn the phone off. But we're not in church, aren't we? Go ahead. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we, it doesn't make us feel good. And so, and we don't always think we can come out the champ on top because somebody can out talk us. I, I never could out talk somebody or out yell somebody. I don't think that fast. I kind of dissect it and process it a little bit. And so, um, you know, affliction occurs for God's divine purpose. And, you know, um, and, and I think for me, I expect it on my prayer walk. I, I expect it's going to be there. Everything's not going to always be rosy. You know, I've seen in my past um, experiences, I've seen where I thought the best thing to do was to walk away, to um, turn my head against it, as opposed to stand there, call it out, confront it, and work through it. I didn't like that part of the process. Um, but if you, for me, if I don't, then truly it will fester. Mm -hmm. It will fester. Um, I'll, I'll use this example when, when um, I guess it was the ministerial alliance. You and I talked about that. 
and you told us some things that God had shared with you. And I got off the phone and later I told you how my, my feelings were hurt by what you said. And, and my husband was encouraging me to talk with you about it. And I said, no, I can't talk with her about it because she said God told her, you know, what's there to talk about? Well, it was my own lack of understanding. And then the situation presented itself where you and I could have that conversation. And we did, and I understood, but I was holding it in, feelings hurt, being wounded, wasn't able to receive the lesson that you were given to me because I was still right here on the surface and I, I, I wouldn't let it penetrate my heart so I could fully understand it. And once you explained it to me, I understood it. So sometimes we have to, we have to talk about it. We have to get it out. We have to confront it. And it's not fair to the other person either if they don't know what they may have said or may have done because we're responsible for our own feelings. That, that's true. Uh, and Ms. Ms. Finley said, uh, we are taught to avoid conflict. We are taught to be nice. It is true. However, when it comes to being afflicted and being spiritually wounded, we have to talk. Now, what Minister Marilyn said, we have to understand that if we stay surface level, y'all better hear me good. If we stay surface level, we will never, ever, ever reach our purpose because we will always be surface level when God is trying to take us deeper. And anytime, and anytime we get afflicted or wounded in some areas, as we said before, God is trying to help us to grow and to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to make sure, God, why is this happening? What do we need to learn from this? You know, so that we don't be so quick to want to run. You know, because if there's a lesson to be learned in the midst of the, of the afflictions, if there's a lesson to be learned in the midst of the spiritual wounding, then guess what? It makes us the better for it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So because Job did not bow down to the pain and did not bow down to the enemy's voices, guess what happened? God restored him and gave him more than what he had. I say that to say this, God is trying to get us to a place, not only to grow us up spiritually so we can have gifts and talents and all that, but he's trying to get us to a place because it's really not about us. If we don't get healed and delivered from afflictions and, and spiritual wounds, how are we going to help somebody else? Okay, Elder Vanessa was getting ready to say something before she froze up on us. Oh, yeah, my electric went out. <laughs> um. So I was I was saying that um, it's funny that we you know we're talking about this because I had gone through something like this right before we came on tonight because you know sometimes we if you're the type of person that don't like conflict and controversy then you'll hold on and not want to talk about what's really going on inside of you so you got you actually have a war going on inside of you and the other people or the other person don't even know what's going on with you and so I had someone to tell me you know if something was bothering you why didn't you just say so for you to just shut down and not say anything you know leads me to believe one thing. And so you can send six um, mixed messages to people if you don't address, you know, what's going on there. But again, you know, if you're the type of person that don't like conflict, then you're going to hold it until, you know, when, and then you may not even ever talk about it. And the other person on the receiving end not know that they have wounded you or have afflicted you because you've not said anything, you know, right. to them. Right. So, so we have to learn how to, the only, only way we're going to get healed is to, is to communicate. And mm -hmm. people get tired of me saying it, but communication is the best policy for me. It literally is. Because I tell people right quick, and people say I'm wrong for saying this. I tell people if, if I said something or done something that afflicted you or hurt you or wounded you in any way, talk to me. If it's a week later, I'm done. It's over. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's over. You know, you have to talk to people while it's still fresh. 
Because if you take too much time to allow that thing to fester and fester and fester, then the enemy gets to talking and he starts telling you all kinds of things where they meant this and they meant that and they meant to harm and da 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 da, da because you allow the enemy to talk to you than the person who you thought harmed you. Okay? But either way we look at it, anytime we feel afflicted or we feel wounded, God is still saying, get something out of it. Okay, grow. I'm, I'm always telling people, don't just go through it, but grow through it. Go ahead, Elder Anthony. Um, as I was sitting here, it, it, it just hit my spirit that a lot of afflictions are only flesh wounds. True. You know, one thing, one thing about a bear, if you, uh, a, a hunter, if he, if he shoots a bear, and that bear, and it doesn't put that bear down, that bear is going to retaliate and he's going to chase you until he gets you. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times what happens is that when we are hit with affliction, certain afflictions, there are only flesh wounds. And if you take time to ask the Lord, say, Lord, what just happened? What is this that I'm dealing with right here? And he might tell you, it's just a flesh wound. It is something that you just need to take responsibility and, 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 and face it head on. Um, um, I was in a situation one time where I was severely afflicted and it took the power of the Holy Spirit to keep me from retaliating because I was right there and he knew, he knew he's not just going to retaliate, he's going to fight because I was right there. I mean, fist was balled up and everything. I was ready and Holy Spirit just gave me such a peace. He said, let it go, let it go. I got this. And so sometimes what happens is, like, like I said, it's a flesh wound because a flesh wound sometimes can be just as worse as actually being shot or cut. Oh, yeah. Because they burn. It burns. Right. And yeah. you have to go deep within and get healed from it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't just put a Band-Aid on. Uh -uh. Like a paper cut. Oh, my gracious. That, that's one of the worst cuts that could ever mm -hmm. be. <laughs> yep. I got one now. But the, but the tongue can hurt just as bad. Uh -huh. You know, even on that thought, even on that thought, you, you, you talked about a, um, a, a paper cut. Sometimes you don't know it at that time. Sometimes right. it'll hit you later. Oh, yeah. It always comes to, to maybe two or three hours later or in the middle of the morning. You wonder why you got the steam. Uh -huh. uh, for those who don't know, we always end at, at, at 830. So I'm going to conclude with this right here. And, and next week, we'll deal with the different types of afflictions, like physiological and different types. OK, guys. Uh, so dealing with spirit of dealing with the spirit of affliction, uh, the spirit of affliction is different from what we understand, which we talked about earlier. Affliction is a state of pain, suffering. We talked about that. However, what we have to understand is anytime we get afflicted, we got to understand um, where it came from, what was the purpose behind it? Okay. As I said, when it comes to when it comes to uh, being afflicted, it has a lot to do with our assignments. Okay, and it has a lot to do with how what the enemy is assigned to do in your life. I'm gonna say it again: our afflictions have a lot to do with our assignments, and also how the enemy has assigned has been assigned to deal with our lives. Just like with Job, what did God say? Have you tried my son, Job? So he released that spirit, okay? God has stepped back and allowed some things because he said, have you tried my son? Have you tried my daughter? I know how they're going to respond, but you don't. But nowadays, God is probably saying, I don't even know how they're going to respond because I've taught them one way, but yet I'm seeing the opposite. Did y'all just catch that? I believe the Lord is looking at some of his people saying, I've taught them well. However, they're not responding the way I want them to respond. So when he steps back and asks Satan, have you tried this one? Have you tried that one? God might be saying sometime, I don't know what I'm going to get. I ain't speaking for God. I'm just saying, I don't know what I'm going to get right now because they act like they delivered. But I know the depth, the deeper part of them, they ain't delivered. So I know how they're going to respond in the midst of this one right here. Okay, so the purpose of spirit of affliction is to stop you from multiplying. I ain't talking about like those, what you call those things you put the water on and they get popped all over the place. What y'all call What's those things, y'all? Y'all remember that movie? Uh, Gremlin. Huh? Gremlin. Gremlin. Okay, thank you, baby. Y'all know I'm crazy with okay. K. Okay, so then this demonic spirit will come to try to stop you from multiplying. Come on. We gotta stop 
not multiplying. We got to stop not growing. We got to stop not being able to pass on something. Okay. It also comes to stop you from increasing. We can't increase if we're still nursing a wound. We can't increase spiritually, mentally, emotionally, if we keep right on laying at the pool, laying on the bed instead of picking the bed up. Okay? We, 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 um, this purpose of the spirit of affliction comes to weaken your strength with multiplied burdens, which means it comes to cause you to be weakened and he keeps piling it on and piling it on and piling it, piling it on because he's seen how you're going to respond. Don't you know the enemy always knows the actions of God's people when we open our mouths, okay? He can throw a whole lot of stuff in our minds, but he don't know how we're going to process it until we open our mouths, excuse me, until we open our mouth. So stop allowing him to weaken your strength as he's piling it on. He can't do it except God allow it. And God knows just how much we can best when it comes to the spirit of affliction and, this, and these spiritual wounds. The Lord knows just how much we can handle. And he's looking at us now saying, oh, I thought they could handle a little bit more than that. Yeah. Okay, so that purpose of the uh, spirit of affliction also comes to kill your future. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow him to take any more of what he's already taken. Okay, that's for me. Okay, so when it comes to certain things that you can pray, you have to understand that uh, you got to tell that spirit of affliction that's assigned to you, whether it's assigned to your finances, whether it's assigned to your health. I'm ahead of myself. This was for next week. Whether it's assigned to your body, whether it's assigned to your marriage, whether it's assigned to whatever it is. You got to tell this demonic spirit that you bind him up, that he cannot move. He cannot prosper in your life. Now, if you don't command him to stop, if you don't command him to move, if you don't command him to cease, then he's going to keep right on coming at you. Especially when it's the same spirit over and over and over again. If you're complaining about it and you're nursing, nursing it, but you're never saying, wait a minute, I bind that one up. I see now where you're coming from. Come on. And then you got to lose God's hands of protection upon you. But if you uh, are in the atmosphere, got God's hand in the atmosphere, but if you constantly not binding up something, you got to learn how to bind and loose in this hour. Amen. Or you're going to always be defeated. Okay. You got to tell that spirit of affliction, you know, I bind you up and you will not terminate my assignment. You will not cause me to die. You will not cause me to lose my relationships. You will not cause me to lose my marriage. You got to bind that demon up and say some stuff. You will not control my mind. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So lastly, and then we are going to close. The Bible talks about in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to what steal, kill, and destroy. Satan loves to wound our spirits. Come on, y'all. He knows just how far to go. He knows just which fiery dots to throw our way. Okay? Because he knows how we've been responding. He knows how to bring a wounded spirit down so he can win. A wounded spirit never lifts up. That afflicting spirit never lifts up. It never gives way. It's always constantly trying to destroy. So what are you going to do about it? Okay? We got to understand that we can endure all kinds of physical afflictions. Like I said, I'm ahead of myself. But when the spirit is wounded, your wounded spirit cannot be healed if you don't allow God to do it. I'm going to say it again. We can endure all kinds of physical afflictions. You can, you can, you can endure a headache. You can do, endure a backache. You can endure a toe ache or whatever. You can endure heavy duty pain. You really can because it's a physical affliction. We know it's not going to last always. It's got to ease up with a Tylenol or something, prayer eventually. But that spiritual wound, that don't ease up so fast. Because it comes in to bruise your ego. It comes in to damage your spirit. It comes in to destroy you. God is saying by the time we get done with all of this in the next couple of weeks, we all going to be in a place that we realize I have been wounded spiritually wounded not afflicted y'all hear what i just said 
Lastly, a wounded spirit only comes as a result of, of a reaction from negative words. I think we said that, what, three or four months ago. A wounded spirit comes as a result of a reaction to negative words, to events, to actions, things that we thought violated our rights. I'm going to say it again. A wounded spirit comes as a result of a reaction to negative words, events, actions, or what we thought violated our rights. I'm going to leave it right there. What we thought violated our rights. <laughs> okay? Not realizing the Lord is the one that allowed it. Who is he? He, he can, he, God doesn't violate. What God does is come in and allow the violation so that he can see just where we are so he can get us healed. Okay? Thank you guys for allowing me to, to minister this tonight. I pray that you got something out of it. Facebook, we're going to go around the room to see what people got. I pray that you put down what you got from tonight as well. I'm going to start with uh, Michelle and I'm going to go up. Tell me one thing you got from tonight, sweetheart. Don't let situations hold me down so I can receive instead of holding it in. Okay, Minister Marilyn. God has purpose in everything and in everything we do, um, we should show that we're the true ministers of God. So stand firm in our afflictions and expect it on our faith walk. All right. Where are we? In my Tibani? I can't hear you, love. I realize it it comes up. Um, in, our afflic in our afflictions, we have to learn to communicate um, openly because it, it will truly hold us back. Okay, uh, Elder Vanessa. That um, afflictions can stop you from multiplying. So, you know, in reality, you can't you can't keep nursing it. You gotta you have to talk about you know what's going on within you. Okay, Elder Anthony. Um, one of the things I got when you were um, you were talking about um, the man at the pool of Bethesda in Mark chapter two when uh, Jesus told them to take up their bed and walk. And the one thing uh, Holy Spirit's been speaking to me about is taking responsibility. You have to take responsibility for certain actions and certain things to take place. Because the Bible tells us that those that choose to live, choose to live, will suffer persecution. Um, and so I, you know, just sitting here looking at the seven signs that's associated with it, it just made things a lot more clear for me you know, why some, certain things are happening. Yeah. Okay. Where are we? P.I.T. Nanette. Um, it's really important to accurately discern the purpose of the affliction so that you will know how to respond correctly and what to speak. Because you don't want, if, if God is allowing something, then the last thing you want to do is to blame God for it or, or blame the situation or the person involved or whatever, whatever. So it's really important to ask the Lord uh, because he is a God of purpose. Okay, what's going on here? And then how? what is my response? Okay. Anybody on Facebook want to tell us what you got from tonight or what part you did get? Okay, while I'm waiting, did you, did you all have anybody to respond on your ends? For those that uh, copied the link, no? Okay. Um, what do we have coming up? Hmm. Oh, there is no fifth Sunday service at Healing Hands this Sunday. So uh, we will not be, don't look for us live on a live feed. You can go back and look at one of our old ones. Um, but we will be back to word and I mean, we will be back in our worship service on the first Sunday. We will have, however, have word empowerment next Tuesday where we will continue with uh, the spirit of affliction. Um, I want to get into uh, the oh. mental, psychological, and I also want to touch next week on that um, financial, okay, afflictions. Because some folks got to understand some things. 
or do I need to talk about the physiological first, the pains and the aches and the bruises and the back aches and the heartaches? And most folks don't want to go there because then you have to understand what the enemy is trying to do with your body. But anyway, we're going to cover a lot of those things in the next couple of weeks. Are you guys, you guys with me on it? We're going to grow together. Amen. Amen. No one had any responses on Facebook. We want to thank you guys again for joining us. Ms. Helen Finley, uh, uh, Minister Gregory, uh, Ms. Gloria Cole, Ms. Ms. Sawyer, good to see you, ma'am. Uh, we thank you guys so much. Anyone have anybody else on their news feed? You know. We're good? Okay, thank you guys for joining us and also for those who were on that we were not able to see. We want to thank you for joining us. I'm always saying um, we don't take for granted that you chose to join us. Amen. You could have been any place else on a Tuesday night, but you chose to um, come in fellowship with us. And, and I really, truly appreciate it. We appreciate it. Amen. Yeah. So um, I don't have any announcements except our church anniversary that is coming up on the 10th of, uh, of September. Guys, we, we invite you to come. Uh, Pastor Michael McGill from Grace Place is going to be our preacher. But we do ask that if you're on Facebook, that you would tap on to the Eventbrite log so that you can register. I believe in keeping everyone safe. So we do believe in social distancing. We're not going to open up the overflow room upstairs, nor the fellowship hall. So we will only be seating downstairs. Um, and we're only going to seat. Um, I need to stop the recording. Not 